Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at my first decentralized application or web page that I've launched on the Flux network. Now, if you like the Flux content, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of that, let's jump into the content. Now, before we jump into the application, let's talk a little bit of the history first. Now, I recently changed jobs and in my new job, they are making use of Python scripts together with APIs to send data across various different applications. Now, full disclosure, you know, I am in the IT space. I've been in IT, I don't know, probably more than 20 years. Um, you know, I studied Java programming or bachelor science degree in programming, but I am the worst programmer out there. And luckily, you know, I've managed to not have to do any programming in the last 20 years. But in the new role, you know, I am sort of the middleman between the business and programmers. So, you know, I play in that space and it's always good to have a decent understanding of, you know, what the programmers would need. And then obviously, you know, I would connect that with the business to ultimately deliver a product that would work for the business and doing it in a effective or efficient way. So, you know, with that challenge, you know, I needed to know a little bit at least of Python and then how APIs are used. So I decided to connect my work learning experience, which needs to be Python and hitting APIs with some of the hobbies that I have in the GPU mining space, which in this case was Flux. Now, I decided to hit some of these Flux APIs to see if I can extract the data making use of Python and learning Python in the process. After managing to watch a couple of videos, I could successfully extract the data that I actually wanted in my Python scripts. But, you know, it was in a command line, so it was great for me, but, you know, it wasn't something that anybody else could use. So it was just my learning experience. So I thought, okay, cool, let me try and put it in a web page so that multiple people can actually make use of it. I bolted on Flask onto Python, and I quickly realized that this is probably not the best looking website out there. And since then, I managed to seek some help to make my data or data that I've been extracting to make it a little bit more prettier so multiple people can actually look at it. And I went to Fiverr naturally to find people that are better and more creative than I am. And I managed to find Radium, which helped me a lot. And I'll leave a link to his Fiverr details at the bottom. Um, you know, you should really check him out. He is absolutely amazing. And he did all of the pretty stuff on the website. He's really a good programmer. So, you know, in case you need web page development, please hit him up. Enough talking about it. Let me jump onto the computer and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, guys, here we are on the computer. So I've got the web page open and the address for it is fluxnode.app.runonflux.io. So I'll leave a link in the video description in case you wanted to, to access it, but this is sort of what it looks like. So it's got a header section here and what we're displaying is the current flux plies, the total nodes, um, and then the nodes per tier. And then once you've put your address in, it will actually show you how much flux you've got in that address and then what the value of that is in US dollars. So hopefully soon or in the future, we will add more currencies. But, you know, at this stage, you know, this is my website and, you know, it costs some money to get the currency conversion APIs. Um, and, you know, there are free ones, but they suck. I've tried incorporating them, but... Um, you know, the free ones at least at this stage suck. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention here on the header section is once you hover your mouse over any one of the tiers, right? So if I take Cumulus here as an example, it will actually show you the pay frequency. So how many days you need to wait more or less for you to get a payout. And then, you know, how much roughly flux a day you would receive. Now, important here, and I see this comment a lot on Discord, is you know you are not getting this amount per day you only receive a reward once you are in the front of the queue so it's important for that uh, for you to remember that now the other thing that we recently added is the apr calculation so this is annual percentage return and this is the amount of flux compared to what you would need to stand up a node now the apr calculation it's important to remember this at least it is the current flux reward plus the released parallel assets. So I'm not counting any parallel assets that hasn't been released. Yes, you are accumulating them, but you know I don't see them as something that you can withdraw at this specific point in time. So the APR calc includes the current flux, um, the normal flux reward together with the released parallel assets. 
so next up i'm just going to specify a address to search against and what i've done is i've already searched on a specific address so i'm saving the addresses in the cookies so you can clear your cookies it just makes searching a little bit easier but you'll just specify your wallet in there hit search and what will happen is i will now hit the apis to extract the latest benchmark information and then perform some calculations so here starting here on the left hand side is the next payout section so what i'm actually doing is i'm having a look at the nodes attached to the wallet and then having a look at which one has got the lowest rank and then calculating the the payout associated to that now this is obviously not 100 correct um you know there might be people dropping off before you so you know you might be working or moving up in the queue um, in that regard if people drop out in front of you now the other section here shows or which i consider probably the most important section is the node overview and this is where all your benchmark informations are so it will show your ip address your tiers ranks last reward next reward um, and then your benchmark has it passed or failed and then it shows you all the important benchmark information now what you will see here is we've added tooltips on the top so it will show you specifically what the specifications are in case you forgot <laughs> i would imagine most people wouldn't forget necessarily but it will show you here what you have on top of that there should be conditional formatting in case you are not hitting one of these benchmarks at that specific run so there should be conditioning conditional formatting in, attached to that now the other thing here is that we've added is the apps on the complete right hand side here so this will show you if there's actually an app running on your node now if there's more than one it obviously just be a number here but in this case if i click on it it will now open up the app section associated to that specific node so you can see this node is running a pre-search so it's quite cool um, now if i go back on the left hand side here is a estimated earning so again taking the released parallel assets into account and obviously the flux reward it will go and calculate for you um, either monthly or daily um, between flux and usd so it just gives you an estimated earning so you know for those guys that want to calculate their passive income um, you know it will show it here on the left hand side now if i scroll a little bit down to the bottom and this is the parallel asset section so it will show you a summary here on the left of how many you've totally claimed um you know how many you've mined um you know so it shows you an overview and then a breakdown per parallel asset so again what you can claim what you have claimed what the fees are um and what your total fees that you have paid now you can see here i've added avalanche but we haven't added atom yet so that should be added hopefully if we get around to it at the end of august so as soon as atom is released so that's just a general overview of the functionality that's available on the main page now the next section that i quickly wanted to talk about is guides so if i go over there and this should be some of the important links associated to flux node so the hardware that you require um, the previous benchmarks the official list of vps options and the two medium guides to to install a flux node and then the multi one that goldie did and then a couple of the videos that at least in my opinion i find useful around installing a flux node and then again a couple of troubleshooting and maintenance things so you know in case you're running into issues these are some of the shorthand information that you know you should be using probably the one that i use the most is the patching one so i just copy and paste the script into my putty command to, to to update um but again you know this is something that you can do now also i just added a couple of other videos so probably most of mine but a couple of the other guys like um, the hobbyist and jump chains videos as well so in case you wanted to watch or get an opinion um you know from somebody else so that's really the the guide section here now the other thing or the last thing that i'll mention here is you know in case you wanted to see which version you are running so hopefully we can update it in the future but this would be the version and then i've got a donation address again you, you shouldn't be necessarily donating this is something free it's something fun um, but you know in case you do want to um, donate here is an address that you can donate and thanks a lot to the guys that's already donated i really appreciate it 
Um, but thanks for that. Also, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the GitHub. So, um, you know, this website is completely open source. So if you want to help and you are keen to help, um, please hit me up and I can make you a contributor or uh, whatever, right? So, you know, the idea is not for me to, to necessarily own this website. Um, you know, I'd like everybody's input. Um, so if you do want to help, just hit me up and then um, I can add you on. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is about the experience of launching an app on Flux. Now, it's really not that hard. I followed the official video and I'll leave a link in the video description and hopefully tag it at the top. But, um, you know, following that video basically helped me with the basics around Docker and pushing and pulling and, and how that works. So, you know, spoiler, I haven't worked on Docker before and it's actually not that hard and it's a great way to containerize your app. Um, but yes, um, following the guide, really not that hard. On top of that, it is super cheap. So there really shouldn't be a reason for you not to try. So I do know there is some functions that is not available. So not everybody's app is ideal to be hosted on Flux at this specific point in time. But, you know, I do know they are working on some of the uh, the functionalities that would make it more universal. Um, you know, like this website, I'm not storing any data or I don't have any database. It's just pulling API information and displaying it on a web page, right? So there's not really, um, or it's not really rocket science, this web page. It's just displaying information, right? So it's ideal for where it is on the Flux network. So, um, but yeah, as soon as they add more features, um, that should help some of the other guys with more complicated apps, if I can say it like that. Now, the other thing is some functionality probably that I'd love to see improve on. And again, hopefully I don't have to wait very long because it's in the roadmap in Q4. But statistics is something that I am missing. Um, you know, on top of that, because it's decentralized, you don't really have a lot of control over your app once um, it's pulled uh, the Docker image, right? So you can't really restart the uh, the node necessarily because it's somebody else's node but you do have some functions in flux os so you know for me personally um, you know what do i like to see in the future is really more statistics around my app on the flux network and a little bit more information regarding starting stopping restarting pulling it um, that type of stuff so it's very limited in that information but again these are things that I know is on the roadmap, so I just need to wait a little bit patiently before they are released. That's it for this one, guys. If you've liked the video, please like it and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.